What are you boycotting till the day you die? This gas station on Valley Road in Montclair across from Alexis Steakhouse that didn't let me use their bathroom and I shit my pants. Dude. Reminds me of a time I shit in a Burger King urinal while on a date with an ex. Sorry Burger Kirking guy I had no choice. We just ate Indian food. The hotel was a 10 minute drive and I could feel a slight shit coming on, but I was confident I had plenty of time. As soon as we left the parking lot I knew I effed up, but it was too late. We pull onto the highway and I tell her to take the next exit at that Burger King. I just have to go pee I said casually. Really I was very close to shitpunting myself. She pulls up to back and I try to be casual about going in, but as soon as I go around the corner she couldn't see me. I'm running. I get into THR bathroom and there is one stall which is a cupid. I figured well. There's no way. I'm F edition. Then I looked over at the urinal, and it dawned on me. Pulled my pants down, and shat all up in that urinal. So now I'm standing there pants down, and are a mess. And all I can do, is wait for the guy to come out. Will another person come in and see me? FFF. Well. The guy flushes a stall and comes out. It was the F I'm Burger King employee. He stops and looks at me in the eye. I look at him, and I'm like dude. I'm really sorry. I had no choice. I'm really sorry man. Without saying anything he turns to the door and walks out. Well. I went in the stall, and got myself cleaned up the best I could. The walk of shame back to the car was unreal. My ex asked me if I was okay. Yeah. Yeah I'm fine lol. I was not fine. I never told her what happened lol. Burger King guy, if you're reading this I'm sorry. Sure Academy. Sleazy little fucks. Their lies in advertising. And nearly impossible to cancel a subscription with them. Tried doing a course that was a free 4 week course. The course was free for the first 4 weeks, but the way they sold it was that the course itself was 4 weeks and free. They say you can finish a course as fast or long as you want. But I think it caps out at 3 lessons a week making you stay in the program for a few months. Paying monthly. Trying to cancel is a nightmare. Sifting through pages and pages of are you sure you want to cancel. Here's a 5% discount. Fill this form out. Now this one. And now this one. Or to get to a phone number that is only valid to call for a couple hours a day. When you finally get a call. It's an automated message. 10 minutes of a robot telling me it cares about me and wants me to stay. Only to finally press 2 to cancel my subscription. Fuck. Sure Academy. Edit. Spelling. Yes. And the one click purchases. I accidentally clicked to find more information and ended up spending $80 on a tool. Kit I didn't want. And then when you finally finish the course you have to pay another $90 if you actually want the diploma. That's why you should consider paying with credit card. If this happens you try to cancel the purchase with them. If they try to give you the rune around, you initiate a charger back on the payment and as an explanation you give that you did not intend to place the order and that their system is confusingly laid out plus employs one click order buttons. Right? Did that before at some place. They then said they'd give a refund to settle the charge back, and then they charged a restocking fee. StubHub the way they handled the pandemic with changing their policies in peak pandemic, so people could only recover credit or resell their tickets instead of receiving cash for cancelled events was ridiculous. I was forced to hold my Coachella ticket for two years. Then they decided to refund everyone this year, when they realized they would make more money, since the ticket prices will surge, when the event is back in 2023. Fuck StubHub. Oh StubHub is so bad. I had the app. So I put a 2 ticket package in my cart, but when I went to check out it had changed to 1 ticket. It was the same price. So they charged me $80 for 1 ticket, when it was the same price for 2 tickets. Why did the number of tickets change once I added them to the cart? So I called and complained, and of course there's nothing they can do about it. They can't cancel the transaction, so I filed a fraud claim at my bank, and got it back. F StubHub. Expedia and all the sites they own slash control, which is a lot of them. Expedia screwed me over in a bad way. And then their customer service people insulted me when I tried to call attention to the serious issues. Ultimately, they offered me a gift card as a take it or leave it solution to the entire issue. I left it and went on a crusade to slam them on Twitter. 
I did it for a long time but got bored. The issue, the website let someone use my email address to buy plane tickets. The person didn't need my PW. And I believe they just made a typo. That resulted in them using my email address in a required field. When I got an email confirmation about my airline tickets, I called to say it was wrong. Expedia cancelled the tickets and called it settled. When the actual customer arrived at the airport and their tickets were cancelled, they called Expedia. The rep from Expedia told them I cancelled their ticket and then gave this angry person my full name and my cell phone hash so that he and I could sort it out between the two of us. The guy was pissed and made vague threats. So I contacted Expedia customer service to get this addressed. When I refused their offer of a $50 Expedia gift card, they told me I could suck a softie or a throbbing hard cock. My choice. I declined to do either. And we parted ways forever. The end. What the fuck? Surely it's an illegal breach of privacy for them to give out your number like that? It must have been. But I wasn't going to hire a lawyer and sue over it. Even if I won. It would be a pain in the D for minimal cash and the lawyers would get most of it. I settled for petty online revenge. But my time is valuable and that got old after a few years. You should have found a shark lawyer. They're grifters but they're the type you can say you can have 60% of the award. If you do this for just a deposit I know a lot of ambulance chasers like that. Harvey Norman. They have terrible customer service, and they took a whole lot of Australian government money that they didn't deserve, and are refusing to give it back. Once upon a time when internet shopping was new and novel, a lot of people didn't trust it because they were afraid of providing their credit card details to the world wide web. It was a time when you were told, don't tell anyone online your name and where you live. However, Slowly people started to adopt to buying things online as they saw the convenience of being able to make purchases and get those items delivered. More websites began getting into the online shopping space and internet shopping started to gain momentum. People realized they could buy things online and even with the currency conversion and shipping fees. It still worked out cheaper than buying in a traditional brick and mortar store. That's how much we were getting ripped off in Australia. The main drawback was back then there were long shipping times. Jerry Harvey, the multi-billionaire, started to whinge and complain that online shopping was hurting his business. He had it good for decades ripping off the Aussie consumer, and with the advent of internet shopping, he could see his profits start to decline. He said it's bullshit consumers have a choice to purchase online and that there could be warranty issues or fake products, or whatever crap that spewed out of his mouth. Every Christmas period he would go on television and complain if sales had decreased from the previous holiday season, or if there was only a slight increase in sales. If sales were good that year, he would be happy and say spending is up. At the time goods and services tax was exempt for online purchases from overseas, as if the total was below 1k. One day Jerry Harvey the rat bastard decides to lobby the Australian government to reduce that threshold to $300 and says Australian businesses can't compete with overseas retailers. Somehow buying an item online, paying currency conversion fees and international shipping still ends up cheaper. Yet Australian consumers aren't being ripped off. There's much public backlash to the fuck with Jerry Harvey's proposal. Politicians scrap the idea. Jerry complains and whinges and whines. Years later he lobbies the government again. However, this time not to reduce the threshold to $300. But he wants all purchases from overseas to be liable for the GST. Somehow, this passes. Not sure how many bribes he had to make in order to have that happen. But there you go. This is the same dickhead that told everyone to spend their $900 GFC stimulus money on plasma screens in his stores. Every time that you make a purchase online from overseas, and it's more expensive by 10%, you can thank your multi-billionaire friend, Jerry Harvey. How much more money does the greedy piece of shit want? I will never buy anything from a Harvey Norman store ever again. I know people that pay more for an item to avoid buying from there. I probably wouldn't be on Jerry Harvey if he was on fire. Susan G. Komen Foundation. They employ alphabet soup and lawyer speak to defraud millions. Note, they do not fund research, nor do they help patients. They are an advertising company. They advertise cancer awareness, because someone may be unaware of cancer backslash backslash s. Matt, same as Komen. 
they promote anti-drunk driving awareness. This is why I tell people to donate to research companies rather than awareness scams. Comcast. Wish I had the option to use anyone else edit. People I know Starlink is a thing. Paying twice as much per month with a huge setup fee for internet that has even more frequent outages is not exactly a good decision. Not to mention it's not even an option, since I live in a huge apartment building. Feel ya there. Wish this dipshit country would actually do something about all these monopolies they claim are illegal, but just flagrantly support. Comcast and AT&T both suck hard. Nestle. I may inadvertently grab one of its products, but when I see the name, I always put it back. I keep a list of their brands on my phone, because most of their stuff doesn't say Nestle. The ones that apply most to me are Gerber and Purina. But I also have to periodically remind myself that they own stuff like Hot Pockets and most bottled water brands too. I only buy bottled water on road trips. But I always check the Nestle list before I do. Same goes for Frito-Lay now too. No more Fritus. Cheetus. Doritus. Tostitus. Lays. Or Uffles. My cats had teeth issues, and I was recommended to buy some of those teeth cleaning cat treats. Bought several packets, before I realized they were Nestle. I now spend more buying a different brand and I don't care. Bank of America. Fucked me over for $10 back in 1993 on a mistake they made, never getting my motherfucking business again. Eater, what a nice surprise, to commiserate with you all on our shared vitriol for Boffer and their ilk. It was maddening to read some of your stories. And a few were just heartbreaking. I'm uplifted by the stubborn streak running through this thread and appreciate the hilarious instances of malicious compliance. Many thanks for the award such a nice treat. Happy Friday to you all. Except you boffer. You can eat a bag of syphilitic dicks. When I was really young. Like 12 or 13. The very first bank account I ever had was at a local bank. I saved for ages and had maybe $50 averaging in the account. Local bank gets bought by a larger bank. Still no issue with my balance fluctuating on the low end. Finally we end with Bank of America acquiring the bank. I basically lost all my account to fees. My father was incensed and we went in and argued our case for a while. The account was brought over from two banks ago. None had fees and they hadn't told us. Etc. No go. So I haven't touched them since. That's heartbreaking. I would have been crushed. When I was little I had a passbook saving account. Where I made deposits weekly. My dad tells this story about how. When I was 6 or 7 I demanded he take me to the bank. So I could save. And when I got there I deposited 6 cents. BTW my go to bank to boycott his chase. Being difficult to deal with after my parents died. They can choke on my 6 cent deposits all day long. I'm sorry they emotionally fucked with you as a kid. I literally just laughed so hard at. They can choke on my 6 cent deposits all day long. That my neighbor next door look outside to see WTF was going on. Ha ha ha. FedEx. As much as I can help it. I obviously can't boycott them. If it's the only delivery option on an e-commerce website. Or if someone slash company happens to ship me something via FedEx. But I have literally chosen to pay more on an e-commerce website. To specifically not use FedEx as a shipping service. Reason. When I bought my Pixel 3. The first day it was supposed to arrive. I worked from home. That day to sign for my package. They never arrived. And on the tracking. Wrote that I wasn't home to receive the package. I was furious. So I spent the next two days working from home. And even did my work in the kitchen. So that I could physically see if any delivery driver actually walks up to my door. Three straight fucking days in a row. Not a single person comes up. Ring door believe and doesn't show them walking up. But they have the motherfucking audacity to claim I wasn't home three straight days in a row. I ended up having to pick it up at their facility. Just because they lied three times in a row. Even after a phone call each day the first two days. The customer service person even told me I probably missed them when I went to the restroom or something backslash backslash underscore can't even own up to the fucking fact that everybody in their company are a bunch of fucking liars. So for that reason alone, I pay more for shipping as long as it's not FedEx. I've specifically driven a further distance to get something printed at Staples or Office Depot just so I don't step foot into a FedEx store. 
Boycotting FedEx until the day I die. I was boycotting Blockbuster for charging me late fees because they lost the tape I returned in their evening return slot. F those guys they ain't getting my business. You showed them. They only have one store left. So the job's not done yet. A. The last one is privately owned. From what I've seen and heard. They're actually good people. They are. It's not far from where I live. They do. Or did. Fun stuff pre-covid, but being the last standing they're a novelty. Nice people though for sure. Pretty much anything in one of those unskippable YouTube ads. You block origin and sponsor block. If you are on mobile you see out advanced. I used to live in an apartment next door to a pizza place. Pizza was decent, so I went there at least once a week. There was a woman who worked there who usually wasn't the most friendly. But I never really had any issue. I wasn't the chatty type. But I was a regular, so I'm pretty sure all the employees recognized me. One time though I walk in, and it's her, and another employee working there. The woman is in back, so I order my usual two slices with the other employee who puts them in the oven. And stand by the counter watching TV to wait. A minute later the woman comes in on the phone, and asks me did you order, and I said yeah I just got the two slices. For some reason she assumed the other employee hadn't done anything, so she puts two more slices in the oven. I wasn't really paying attention, so I didn't think anything of it. A minute later the other employee walks back in, takes the two slices she put in for me, and boxes them up. That's when the woman realizes what happened, I still didn't realize, and completely loses her shit at me underscore. She starts screaming why, didn't you say your slices were already in? Now I just wasted these, and dramatically dumps them in the trash. What's wrong with you? The whole place just goes dead silent and everyone is staring at me. I'm just standing there bewildered, and trying to make sense of what just happened. So I just blurt out sorry and walk out. As the shock wore off, and I replayed the events in my head. Realizing I didn't really do anything wrong, or at worst was just an honest misunderstanding. I got pretty upset that I got yelled at like a child. Especially after being a regular for years. At that moment I decided I'm never stepping foot in that pizza place again. And I didn't. I lived next to it for another 3 years, and not once went in, or even ordered from it. State Farm. Thanks to some whistleblowers, they got busted committing fraud against their customers and the federal government after Hurricane Katrina. They told their claims adjusters to classify damage as flood damage, rather than wind damage, so that they could reject the claim and tell customers to file a federal flood insurance claim. Katrina survivor here had a 250k policy, had to sue them due to non-payment to only end up with 20k. I hate the insurance industry with a passion. Yeah. The flood insurance thing was just the tip of the iceberg. I'm with you on the insurance hate. State Farm just gets an extra level of hate. Multi-level marketing schemes. They are shit companies that attract shitty, and sometimes desperate people, and train them on how to profit off of their friends and families. They destroy lives and I refuse to support them. Edit, btw reddit is the reason I found out how predatory MLMs are. The anti-MLM community especially here on reddit, has done a great job informing people who might otherwise be vulnerable to these schemes on what they really are. My grandma has been a part of an MLM for my dad's entire life. Once her grandkids were adults she started pushing it on us to buy or even sell. It's her religion. Every problem in the world, from cancer to mosquitoes in your yard, can apparently be solved by a product her company sells. I have tried multiple times. To have a decent relationship with her as an adult, but she always seems to F it up by bringing in her MLM. I have to block her from seeing slash commenting on some social media posts because she somehow finds a way to bring that shit up. It's so sad. I know she loves me and she believes in this garbage company so much that she thinks she is helping me, but instead it's turned her into a person I can hardly stand. Lifetime Fitness. It really pains me to write this because I really love their gyms. I had a membership at Lifetime on and off through college. I went to a very large university with great amenities. So I didn't need the membership during the school year. I tried to cancel at the end of one summer. I was at the gym one day and I asked about cancellation. I was told to come back at a certain time frame the following Wednesday to cancel. I complied. 
when I showed up the person doing the cancellations wasn't there. I was told to return the following Wednesday. Surprise. Surprise. The person wasn't there again. I told them I was going to stop the payment through the credit card company. They responded by telling me that they'd take me to collections then. I ended up escalating through their corporate offices to get the membership cancelled. They managed to get two extra months of fees out of me. After that year of college, I shifted over to LA Fitness and maintained that membership for about 10 years. When I moved away from LA Fitness, I joined the YMCA, where I've been for the last 5 to 6 years. I will always have a gym membership, but I'm committed to not joining a lifetime fitness again until I'm reimbursed. It's really a loss for both of us.